unless you have good lighting off back behind it to silhouette it with lightning. Uh, Precision storm chasing is very difficult to do during the day, much less the night. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we try to do it safely, but you almost have to be right there to see it. And fortunately, no cars were, were uh, affected by it that I could tell on Highway 62. Cars had pulled over to the east and to the west where we were. So, um, again, uh, impressive multi-vortex tornado crossed Highway 62 just east of Snyder at the Highway 54 junction. Uh, we're heading north on 54. We're going to catch the mountain road and, and go east. Uh, over towards Saddle Mountain, which is uh, where uh, this uh, tornado is uh, heading off to, to the north, northeast. Mike? So, Mark, you're doing a great job. Uh, be careful. Um, well, what is that? Ah, okay. So, so, this is Mark Dillard's video from earlier, and we're freezing it for you, uh, showing, and we do think it's still on the ground uh, on the east side of Odetta. So, there's the, uh, there's the tornado itself. And it went from a cone to kind of a, an elephant trunk shape, if you can kind of visualize that. It went from a cone to an elephant trunk. That's when it was in the evolution between the two right there. Uh, that was just literally about seven minutes ago. So we're going to quickly go up to this storm. This storm appears to be weakening some. There is still a tornado warning on it. Uh, it's still heading for Fay and Thomas on the highway. Hail size here is nickel and quarter. This is up here in northeastern Custer County, heading for Blaine County. If we have Mike Bennett on the phone, we can talk to him briefly. The velocity is still there. It is still there. Still a tornado warning and Thomas should still be in their tornado safe spot. Let's go to Mike Bennett here looking at that. Still might be a tornado there. It's possible and very close to Thomas. Mike. Okay, Mike, yeah, we're uh, between Custer City and Thomas right now, and, uh, you know, don't have any, not seeing any power flash or anything. We're in heavy rain, uh, and, Mike, I'll tell you, on the, on the mezzo we were in a while ago, we got slammed with 70-mile-an-hour winds, possibly 80-mile-an-hour gusts. This, very, this storm was really wrapped up, but no tornado on the ground that we can see right now. Back to you. Okay, that is... Uh... Mike Bennett, let's go back over to radar. So what you need to know about this northern storm still has a tornado warning, still showing some pretty hot velocities in there. So you folks in Thomas should be in a tornado safe spot at least for the next 10 or 12 minutes, at least. And then from there up the highway toward the west side of Watonga in Blaine County. Those velocities are hot enough. A tornado is still possible in that storm. Could even be producing one right now uh, in the immediate vicinity of Thomas. So that's a dangerous situation for Thomas right now in northeastern Custer County. So don't let your guard down and continue your precautions. Those velocities are still quite hot on the radar Doppler and a tornado still very much possible or could be in progress. So Thomas to the west side of Watonga, Tornado precautions very much continue. That's about 75 miles to the northwest of Oklahoma City is where that is located. So talking about Thomas right now, Eagle City, Watonga, and then over toward Hitchcock, Watonga there by about 913. It's currently 840. Back down to this one. Uh, this was a powerful tornado as it crossed 62 at 54 and still showing a debris ball and it still looks like it is still on the ground for that matter, looking at radar. Northeast of Odetta, northwest of India, Homa, and southwest of Saddle Mountain and Mount Scott is where this is located. Mark Dillard is going to be going eastbound over here toward the road to Medicine Park, and he's probably there right about now. We're going to zoom on in. The debris ball you see is what you saw from Mark Dillard's live stream and reporting. The debris that was picked up around Highway 62 is now in the debris ball. Yes, yeah, still very much a tornado on the ground here. No doubt about it. Let's go back over to Mark Dillard. Mark, it's a vicious velocity signature. Just about two miles east of 54, trying to hook due north. Yes, yes Mike. Uh, and we did not take uh, 49, the uh, Medicine Park Road, uh, just because I, I don't want to get hung up on, on, a, on a road that I can't get uh, north or south on in case uh, the power lines are down. So uh, on, 
I don't have eyes on it because we're in such driving rain right now. I'm trying to get up to Cooperton and then east uh, where the road network is a little bit better. I don't want to get hung up in the mountains uh, and, and have to fight uh, back out of it with that thing uh, right there. So uh, I don't have eyes on it per se. Uh, we're monitoring by radar, but it's still an impressive um, tor tornadic signature and likely still on the ground. So, folks, uh, east of 54 and uh, southeast of Cooperton, uh, please take your tornado precautions uh, over toward uh, Saddle Mountain because uh, it, it was a multi-vortex digging tornado uh, actually anchored there at 62 and 54 uh, for about 30 seconds. Like it was very you know, to see with the naked eye, I know the, the camera probably doesn't do it justice, but uh, a very, very impressive multi-vortex tornado uh, for really any time of year, and especially October, uh, here in this uh, uh, second season that we've had. And we were just down here on Sunday uh, chasing. So, uh, you know, I know these roads pretty well down here. So uh, we're going to continue north to Cooperton and then east, and uh, we should be able to uh, catch it crossing again near Saddle Mountain, Mike. So where are you from the highway junction there that you're just referring to? How, how far away are you from that junction? I'm just uh, north of uh, 49. I'm probably between uh, um, the Medicine Park Road and Cooperton right now on, on 54, Mike. Okay, it, it's, it, it's literally paralleling you. It, it's, it's about two miles due east of you right now. So, so it's moving due northward now paralleling uh, Mark Dillard and his uh, other tracker with him. They're going northbound on 54. It's moving due northward. So uh, as it tracks to the north, northeast, this is in far western Comanche County, and it's going to head on up towards Saddle Mountain is where it's going to be heading. Here's your time of arrival there. So it's, it's going to be heading into the Wildlife Refuge, Saddle Mountain there at 9 o'clock. It's 840 right now. And then Alden, up here in Caddo County is where it's heading, okay? So up into Caddo County, but this is a really pretty, oh my goodness, this, look at, this is the strongest velocity signature we've had all night. That could easily be something on the order of like a EF3 tornado, P potentially stronger. That is a vicious velocity signature. Uh, Mark, if you can tell me from that junction there at 49, you should probably just stop and see if you see it. Not, not keep going north, but just stop where you are. It looks like it is large and by far the strongest it has been yet. It's two miles east of the junction right now. Uh, yes, Mike. I just, I, I really can't see it with the rain in between me and, and the notch down there. I've got to, I really need to continue and to get better cell service uh, over toward, uh, you know, uh, the north side of Saddle Mountain. Uh, because uh, I believe my shot may even be down right now. The cell service is, is very spotty down here. Uh, Mark, so can, Mark, to... Mark, can, Mark, can you go ahead and just stop, though, for a minute? Just, just stop for a minute, because the tornado has, okay. has slowed down, and it's like doubled or tripled in size. Anybody that lives along 54 at 49, right there on the Comanche County, Kiowa County line, Folks, it could easily be an EF3 or higher. That's a vicious, vicious velocity signature. Very, very dangerous right here. And it's moving due northward slowly, much stronger than it was when it had that digging uh, debris cloud earlier. Let's go back over to Mark Dillard uh, to see if he has a visual there on it. And that last scan there, it weakened just a bit, that last scan. Go, Mark. Okay, we're, we're off on a paved road here, Mike. Paved side road. Uh, just to the south and east of Cooperton, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop right here because uh, I am literally from the rotation about, um, let's see, probably about three miles. It's just to my south, southeast, so I'm going to stop right here and kind of wait on it to, to pull up, and we should have, be able to, to, to see it fairly well. Um, it look, should be look. just almost right in front of us here in about uh, a minute or two. So we're looking off to the uh, to the uh, east southeast, and uh, the winds are starting to uh, the winds are starting to let up just a little bit. So we're starting to get into the notch. I don't have rain anymore. Uh, so 
I'm just going to watch off to the uh, east southeast. So, Mark, um, hang on just a second. The tornado warning has now expired. The tornado warning for northeastern Custer around Thomas and far western Blaine has been allowed to expire now. All right? So, it's no longer in effect for you folks up there west of Watonga, keeping you forewarned on that. This is, is a vicious signature here. The mesocyclone is really dominating the whole southern part of the storm, and it's right now crossing 49, and it's going to travel just to the east of Cooperton is where it's going to be going, and then eventually up toward Alden up here in southwestern Caddo County and far southeastern Kiowa County. We'll go to the velocity signature. Still very much looks like a significant tornado on the ground. It peaked in intensity a few minutes ago, just south of 49. But it's crossing 49 right now, about two miles to the east of 54. Mark Dillard is located where that 54 sign is located there on the highway. He's looking to the southeast. Mark, the rain should clear, should start to clear here any moment for a visual. Yeah, Mike, I'm still looking off uh, out to the uh, east southeast. For, I'm just, I'm just uh, about a mile or two south of Cooperton. I can see the lights of, uh, of the home, the Cooperton, and uh, can't really make out much. I'm, I'm almost going to do uh, just above my head here, Mike, and trying to look and see if there's a uh, much. There, there is a swirl. At, Above me, but I don't see a uh, I don't see like a funnel feature or a wall feature. The lightning's just really not cooperating right now. Wait a minute, I may have I may have a rope roping out just to my south and east by about uh, by about maybe a mile, three quarters of a mile. Like looks like a roped out funnel uh, just at the cloud base here that I'm looking directly above my head at. Uh, and then I'm looking off to the south and east. I don't see anything like a like a wedge or or anything like that that would really be alarming to me. Uh, I just don't have that kind of feature right now. But I do have a roped out feature just above us here, maybe at about uh, three to the south uh, east southeast of uh, Cooper. Okay, Mark Diller reporting live there southeast of Cooperton. It's in a pretty rural location, but uh, every indication that there was a violent tornado on the ground just a short uh, four to five, six minutes ago, uh, just to the northwest of Indiahoma and to the southeast of Cooperton there. A velocity signature was uh, incredibly strong for the month of October, uh, really. Uh, the tornado warning has been allowed to expire. Let's go back over to radar for the supercell, the tornadic supercell near Thomas. This tornado warning has been allowed to expire. Still a severe thunderstorm warning, Watonga, and then over toward O'Keene in northern Kingfisher County is where that is tracking, but no longer a tornado warning there. Say that again? On the northern storm. Okay, new tornado warning on the northern storm. This one so let's go get an update real fast on that. Mark, uh, Mike Bennett now up here northeast of Thomas. Brand new tornado warning. The town of Cody is in the path and then also near and northwest of Watonga. Okay, Mike. Yeah, we're uh, just exiting Thomas right now. Uh, Thomas does not have any electricity, nor does Custer City. Uh, the tornado was on the ground southwest of Custer City, so very likely uh, took out some power lines or something that, that caused their power outage. But right now, um, I, I had a feeling this thing was going to ramp back up just watching velocities on radar, and it sure enough has. So they've reissued tornado warning on it. We're, we're going to uh, move towards uh, towards Faye right now. And be, now we're going to be in a better position on it than we've been since we left Clinton uh, because we're going to be actually we're going to be in a good position like we were when we left Clinton. We're going to be on the southeast side of it. And uh, so probably we'll be up in a – well, I got a lot of high water I'm driving through in Thomas. But uh, anyway, we'll uh, be on the south side of the storm looking to the northwest, and uh, we'll have better visual on it than we did when we were in Chester City. Back to you. Okay, let's go back over to radar. So if you're just joining us here, new tornado warning here. 
Uh, no power in Thomas and no power down in Custer City. Uh, either damaging wind related, lightning related, or tornado related. Don't know yet, but uh, there's been intermittent touchdowns appear likely. Confirmed with power flashes a while ago. New tornado warning though from the Thomas area northeastward to the uh, Hitchcock area to the north and west of Watonga. Hail size there running between Nickel and Quarter. And there's the velocity signature, the hot green, the hot red getting hotter. Couple of areas of circulation there, one east of Thomas and another one north of Thomas. That circulation went directly over Thomas with the tornado warning in effect, and there is no power in Thomas right now. So that's what's going on in uh, Custer County, northeastern Custer County, and the strongest velocities there are going to be just on the northeast side of Thomas moving up into northern Blaine County. So this, we're talking Roman Nose is up here in Roman Nose. That's where it's tracking. If right up toward Roman Nose, east of Oakwood and northeast of Thomas and southwest of Hitchcock. But Roman Nose is where that supercell is tracking. So there's your uh, time of arrival there. The Roman Nose area would be about 915 or so for Roman Nose. North and west side of Watonga is where that's tracking. So that is a new tornado warning there. So tornado warning here. This storm continues to move to the northeast. I broadened out the shot here. There's Oklahoma City right there. We talked about this possibility earlier about a supercell coming up from southwest Oklahoma around the 9 to 10 o'clock hour, and that is indeed happening now. It's one supercell, but it's produced multiple tornadoes, and some of them have been quite strong for any time of year. And it may still be on the ground. Tornado warning with tornado confirmed continues in effect around Saddle Mountain, just to the west of Mount Scott. Still a hook, but it looks like the tornado may have peaked in intensity about 10 minutes ago. Velocity signature was probably uh, one of the highest signatures I've seen for the month of October there for about a five minute period. It was indications of a EF3 or even higher there for a shorter period of time. Uh, it now has lifted up into the area southeast of Cooperton, very close to Saddle Mountain is where it is right now. Mark Dillard is there. He's east southeast of Cooperton by a couple of miles. Let's get to the velocity signature here. Let's go back to, let's look at the velocities really fast and we'll go to Mark. There's your time of arrival ahead of it, heading up into Caddo County, clipping southeastern Kiowa County. There's your time of arrival as we head over into Kiowa County and the velocities. Yes, it is still very much a tornado vortex signature. Mark, again, it is paralleling 54, about two miles east of 54, just south southeast of Cooperton. What do you see? Uh, yes, Mike. I'm actually coming up to Cooperton right now, and when I make my turn to the east, I'll have a, a better shot of it. Uh, or be able to, to see it just a little bit better. I've got to kind of race out ahead of it uh, to set up uh, because I don't want to get caught, uh, you know, in between uh, the core and, and the wraparound there. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to reposition uh, while I can uh, kind of in a more uh, uh, open area of the notch here. So uh, still uh, continuing with that large uh, debris signature that we had um, it's maybe kind of closed off, as I meant, was mentioning, uh, when I had that uh, funnel feature over the top, uh, kind of a rope feature uh, over the top of me uh, just a few minutes ago. So uh, I'm getting up to just north of uh, Cooperton here to uh, the 19 intersection, and then I'll turn, and then I'll look back uh, due south and, and to the southeast and uh, see what I can see, Mike. Uh, so turning right now to uh, toward a mountain, uh, to uh, Saddle Mountain. Okay, so Mark, what you need to know is the uh, original tornadic circulation and the tornado has occluded. It's trying to wrap back to the northwest, but it's weakening fast. And a new circulation is rapidly forming to the east, and it's doing so literally right now uh, just on the east side of Saddle Mountain. So, Mark, you'll obviously want to be heading eastbound if you're not doing so already. Uh, that tornado circulation that was earlier very strong for any time of year is now rapidly weakening and pulling off to the northwest. Doesn't appear to be a tornado right now. So there's your time of arrival. Mark, did you copy that? New circulation forming about four yeah, miles yeah, east yeah, of the yeah. old one. Yeah, heading towards Saddle Mountain right now. Okay, Mark Dillard there. He's uh, doing a great job with his other photojournalist with him in less than perfect conditions down in southwest Oklahoma. Of course, dark, and there's been uh, big tornadoes down here, powerful tornadoes with digging uh, debris balls 
uh, from his live stream. Dangerous situation tonight, folks. Uh, nighttime tornadoes that are not messing around. These are significant tornadoes for any time of year, capable of producing a lot of damage. Serious, serious situation. So here's your time of arrival right here. So moving northeasterly, 35 miles per hour. It's going to be heading into Caddo County. We're going to show you how this old tornado weakened. You see it happening right here. It's trying to pull to the northwest. We call that an occlusion. So what that is called is it kind of spins in a counterclockwise fashion to the northwest. And as it's doing that, the new circulation quickly forms off to its east. This is a classic case here of the occlusion occurring, tornado lifting and weakening and going away, and the new mesocyclone rapidly forming to the east of it, which will have rapid tornado potential east of Saddle Mountain and to the west of Mount Scott and west of Lake Latonka and Mears and Medicine Park. That's what's happening. You can see the two circulations basically splitting. This one's going to the north-northwest, and this one is moving due northeast. Look for the red and the green, and the red and the green. Two circulations in that uh, big area of supercell back here on the uh, inflow side of the storm. So let's go back to Mark Dillard, get an update. He's eastbound now out of Cooperton. Mark? Uh, yes, Mike. Uh, just don't have much uh, to describe as far as that new circulation. Uh, kind of getting back into the rain a little bit. Um, due uh, east of Cooperton uh, on, uh, from uh, 54 now. Uh, so I'm just going to have to have a little time to catch, uh, to catch it up, catch up to, to that new circulation and, and uh, then get right in on it at the notch there and work my way around the mountain roads. So uh, I don't have eyes on uh, any kind of uh, structure really per se right now, Mike. Mark, are you planning on going down uh, 115, or are you going to go east on 19? Yeah, I'm going to work my right. When I say the mountain roads, I just mean around Saddle Mountain there, that, that crook, and, uh, and then uh, continue on. Okay, the hook is rapidly reforming. Uh, so this is going to be up here in the mountains between Saddle Mountain and Mount Scott. But the hook is rapidly forming here on the eastern mesocyclone, doing so at a high rate of speed. Look at the hook there quickly forming, and the velocities are the actual wind speeds are like doubling here over a period of just a few minutes' time from, you know, 30 to 40 to 60 to 80. The velocity is coming up very, very fast. Rapid cyclogenesis here. I'll adjust that track a little bit more to the east as it moves uh, into Caddo County. So we're talking about Boone and Apache and to the northwest of Latonka. And look at that mesocyclone ramp up. The red and the green coming together very fast, getting very hot, and you're going to likely see that tighten up. Uh, but already has a new tornado warning on it. So here is 19 from Apache to Boone is where that is located right now. Let's go back over to Mark Dillard. We're going to go back up to the storm near Roman Nose coming up next. Mark? So Mark Dillard is going to be east of Cooperton right now. Let's go back up to this uh, storm uh, farther up the line. So uh, eventually that storm down there is going to be approaching uh, the southwest metro here as we head a little bit deeper into our evening hours uh, for you folks down around uh, Canadian County and Grady County. So let's go back up to uh, Mike Bennett. Tornado warning does continue uh, west of Watonga right now. And, uh, what, Mike, uh, no power down in Thomas. What do you have going on right now? Okay, Mike, yeah, we, uh, we just crossed the Blaine County line. We're about three miles north of the river, and um, we're getting ready to turn around. The, the uh, mesocyclone is behind us, so I'm getting ready to turn back around. It took us a while to punch through, and once we did, we're in very, very clear air right now, so I'm getting ready to uh, find a spot here where I can turn around and point my camera in my eyes to the south and uh, see what we have back in there. Um, Mike, have you seen any, any power flashes at all or any more updates on, on yeah. power outages? Yeah, no, Mike, uh, we just came through Faye. Did Faye have power when we came through there? I think Faye had power, but I know Thomas did not. And um, so anyway, uh, Mike, I need to get, I've got a security guard here. I need to, to uh, uh, pitch it back to you. 
for a minute and let me get uh, better positioned here. Okay, so uh, Roman knows, uh, everybody up around Roman knows, uh, you know, in the fall, folks might be up there camping and such. It is heading for Roman knows, all right? So that is a heads up for you. You're under a tornado warning in Roman knows. It's a big deal. Nighttime tornadoes, they're dangerous. Two big supercells here. One southwest of Roman Nose, the other one between Mount Scott and Saddle Mountain. Both appear to be tornadic, especially the one down here between Saddle Mountain and Mount Scott. But uh, this one easily could produce tornadoes up in the Roman Nose area. So if you know anybody up there camping around Roman Nose, you have to tell them that it's dangerous up here. This has produced multiple tornadoes. There's power outages in the wake of it from at least wind, lightning, or mesocyclone damage, which could easily roll mobile homes and things like that. Romanos is under a tornado warning right now. It's going to go just immediately west and north of Watonga, basically right into Romanos. So if you know anybody up there, you have to text them or call them and tell them that it's coming. It's not very far away either. And they've got to take those precautions. That community shelter, whatever is substantial, they've got to go there now. Tornado warning in effect and going through that type of campground situation would be the potential worst case scenario with a tornado warning in effect at night. So they have to know that in Roman Nose. It's a big deal. Roman Nose right here just a few miles north of Watonga right here and the mesocyclone with a tornado warning is heading right for Roman Nose. Hail size is running uh, not too big under golf ball size, dimes and nickels. Circulation center there is now out of Custer County and it's up here southwest of Roman Nose. Doesn't appear to be tornadic right now, but that doesn't really mean a whole lot because the tornado warning does continue in effect, but it is heading directly into Roman Nose and the time of arrival on that is about seven to 10 minutes from right now. There's your time of arrival. Roman Nose there looking at about about 914. It's now 912 or so. 912. It's now 901. So 13 minutes from right now, the Roman Nose area for the mesocyclone, but the hail will precede it and the damaging winds may precede it as well. This is a classic supercell with a well defined hook down here. Looks like it could easily be a tornado back on the ground already, and that didn't take long from the new mesocyclone. Looks like some type of debris ball has already formed, and it looks like a tornado on the ground already. This is going to be southwest of Boone and Apache, southwest of Highway. Uh, 19 there and northwest of Lake Latonka, but it sure looks like a tornado on the ground again in between Saddle Mountain and Mount Scott. Let's go to Mark Dillard here with a live update. Mark? So Mark Dillard is east of Cooperton right now is where he is located and uh, this is going to be traveling northwest of Lake Latonka and uh, northwest of Mears and Medicine Park and up there uh, approaching Boone and Highway 19 and Apache. Mark, are you with us? So Mark Dillard is repositioning. We're going to reposition that storm projection right there for you to give you an idea. So we're looking at Boone at 925 or so and Mears uh, 911 should go a little ways northwest of Mears, but uh, Mears, you are in that danger zone as well. So you have to keep that certainly in mind. So that looks very much like a tornado back on the ground, uh, now crossing 115, 115 southwest of Boone and Apache right here. Pretty, pretty high velocity signatures right there. So moving northeastward into Caddo County, from Caddo County, it's going to go up into northwestern Grady County, out there to the west of Minko and Tuttle and southwest of Union City, and maybe near Verdon and north and west of Verdon, up into western Grady County. But that is a, a strong circulation center there with a tornado warning, and it looks like there's even a tornado vortex signature embedded in that right now, uh, crossing Highway 1. 15 as it moves to the northeast at 35 to 40 miles an hour. There's Boone. Boone is right there, maybe traveling near or west of Boone. So moving northeastward into Caddo County. The older tornado looks like it is weakened altogether. Hail size is running quarters to golf balls here. And there's the tornado warning polygon there into western Caddo County. If Mark Dillard's back with us, we can talk to him. Uh, he should be east of. Cooperton right now 
and it's very close to Mount Scott and Saddle Mountain in between the two right now. Mark, are you back with us yet? Uh, cell coverage down here is really spotty because of the mountains. He's down there in the mountains right now. And as soon as he gets back on the phone, uh, we can talk to him. So there's the hook. Looks very much like it's tornadic right now. And there's your motion northeast, talking about Mears and Boone and Pine Ridge and Fort Cobb up there in Caddo County. Classic signature there with a what appears to be a brie ball and a stinger tail with a hook. Uh, right there in northwestern Comanche County. This is about 70 miles or so southwest of downtown Oklahoma City. The storm is moving to the northeast at 30 to 35 miles per hour. If Mark Diller's not there, we're going to go back over to Mike Bennett with an update on that northern storm. Mike? Okay, Mike, I'm, uh, well, I'm, I'm uh, eight miles west of Watonga on 270, and I've got the mesocyclone just to my west. And we just got turned back around here so we can uh, kind of watch uh, for any development. And also, we don't have a lot of lightning that's not helping us out like it was down by Clinton. But uh, so that's what we're kind of doing right now is just waiting for uh, the right lightning flash to light up a wall cloud or any cloud features in there. But right now, Mike, let me check my winds here, my surface winds. Surface winds are about not that strong, really. Probably about 20, 25 out of the east, but it is feeding into it. Um, so uh, if those surface winds crank back up, then uh, we'll be, uh, you know, probably uh, uh, more likely to have a tornado developing. Right now, I don't see anything that's screaming, you know, imminent tornado. Uh, but we're gonna, we're right here with. It. Back to you. Okay, so let's give you a little broad view here. Back over to Max One. So the tornado watch has been extended farther to the east and until 11 o'clock tonight. It now includes Kingfisher and Canadian and uh, Grady counties and Garfield County. So the tornado watch now is officially on the western sides of the Oklahoma City metro area. Tornado warnings now just to the east of Guyman. Here comes the squall line out of the panhandle. And then tornado warnings for southwestern Caddo County and tornado warnings for Blaine County right now heading for Roman Nose. So we have three tornado warnings in the state right now. And the green is the tornado watches now. The western sides of the Oklahoma City Metro tornado watch until 11 o'clock tonight. And uh, here's radar, the broad view here. Uh, nothing in the immediate Oklahoma City Metro right now. Two big supercells, one in southwest Oklahoma, the other just northwest of the Metro, about 75 miles to the northwest near Watonga, and also that tornadic storm east of Guyman right now. So here's west central Oklahoma, all the actions in these two storms here, and here's Oklahoma City right here. Uh, this one's about 80 miles to our southwest, and this one's 75 miles to our northwest right now. They're both moving northeasterly between 33 and 36 miles per hour. Uh, this one still has a tornado warning on it as well. Heading for Roman Nose. Make sure they know about it in the Roman Nose area that they're under a tornado warning. It's had a history of producing wind damage, power outages, and tornadic activity back down to its southwest. So still a dangerous storm there. Zooming on in. There's Watonga, Roman Nose area, the bigger hail now. Uh, nickels, dimes, and maybe a few quarters now coming into Roman Nose, and then from there tracking up toward Hitchcock, central and northern Blaine County is where this is located. Let's go back over to Mike Bennett with an update on that storm. Mike? Okay, Mike, uh, same as before. Uh, the inflow winds are actually picking up, though, uh, out of the east. Uh, I must say they're probably, we're probably getting uh, 35 to 40 mile an hour winds now feeding into it. We've decided I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a couple more miles to the east towards Watonga and find a spot to turn around where I can have a right. We were right close to the mezzo. I want to get further back so that we have a broader view of it, and it's a lot easier to see cloud features. It's going to be a lot easier to spot a funnel cloud or tornado uh, if one develops. So that's what we're doing now. We'll go another, probably another mile and then find a spot to turn around and I have a good view of it. Back to you. Okay, that is Mike Bennett reporting for the storm that's now in the Roman Nose area. Let's go back over to radar again. No immediate signs looking at radar and Doppler velocities that anything's on the ground right now, but officially the tornado warning does continue. And again, heading for Roman Nose 
and to the southeast of Canton Lake and Canton, southeast of there, a fair distance, pretty much moving due northeasterly at about 33 miles per hour. It has had a history of producing damage back down to its southwest. Hail size, not all that big, nickels and dimes for the most part, but uh, Roman nose located right here, and the core and the mesocyclone going right, coming right into Roman nose. The circulation, though, is not very strong. It's back here to the west. Northwest of Watonga does not appear to be a major problem right now. Rotation wise, the official tornado warning, though, does continue. Don't see any signs right now of that being especially tornadic. Looking from a couple of different Doppler radar vantage points right there as it moves to the northeast, the tornado warning uh, does continue, though, for a while longer. Definitely a broad mesocyclone there, but nothing really imminent. Pretty much on Northwest Highway right now, west northwest of Watonga. And there's your motion to the northeast, Eagle City, Hitchcock, and then from there, Okeen, eventually 946 as it heads into northwestern. Kingfisher County out of Blaine County. Now back down to the southwest, here's the other supercell. This one is stronger in terms of tornado potential, and it's up here just to the uh, north and west of Mount Scott uh, by a few miles. Here is Caddo County, here's Grady County, Chickasha, Verdon, Pocasset, Amber, Minko, Tuttle, Union City, Mustang right there. You see the motion, and it is heading pretty much right toward the southwestern sides of the metro. And the timeline on that is going to be between uh, 10 and uh, 1045 tonight as it moves to the northeast, also between 33 and 35 miles per hour. It has cleared Highway 62. The tornado did cross the highway there at Junction 54 near Odetta, but now it is pushed clear of that area and is about to move into Caddo County where tornado warnings do continue. If we have Mark Dillard, uh, we could talk to him. He's been navigating around around the mountains to the east of Cooperton is where he has been. And uh, he is, last time he joined us about 20 minutes ago, uh, he was eastbound out of Cooperton. So the tornado warning very much continues there. Uh, we'll go to the velocities here and kind of zoom on in. Look at the hook. The hook is still there. Just to the west of Apache and Boone, Highway 19, just to the northwest of Mount Scott is where that is located, northwest of Lake Latonka. And there is your storm projection on that over toward Boone, and then from there on up there towards central Caddo County, not too far from Anadarko, just to the west and north of Anadarko is where that's going to be tracking. Velocity signature here, uh, looking at the red and the green, uh, it has come down some. It was earlier a little bit more intense, but what could be a tornado vortex signature there is just about five miles southwest of Highway 19, west southwest of Boone by around uh, nine to ten miles right there on the Caddo, Comanche, and Kiowa County line. And the other tornado uh, looks like it has lifted and gone away altogether southeast of Cooperton. The new tornado signature here, uh, which may or may not be a tornado, but it's pretty strong, a lot stronger than the northern storm right now, uh, to the southwest of Boone coming into Caddo County. And everything's cleared on out with that other tornadic storm there, supercell there that weakened, and the hail sizes running, nickels and dimes, and a few quarters there as well. So right now there may not be any tornadoes on the ground. That would be good news, nothing really imminent on radar, and, uh, but this one certainly has potential of continued tornadic activity as it comes into Caddo County from the southwest. And you see the motion there northeasterly at around 35 miles per hour. The hook has also become a little bit less defined here in the past few minutes. So the trend right now with both of these appears to be very good. Broadening that shot out again, there's Tuttle and there's Oklahoma City downtown. You see the motion there to the northeast. So it'll continue to push on off into Caddo County, then into Grady County, near Verdon and west and north of Chickasha. And then from there, it may come into the southwest metro. Uh, it is cooler up here. It's cooler in the metro than it is in this part of our state, but uh, it'll likely still be rotating for quite some time. Let's go back over to Mike Bennett, check out that northern storm near Roman Nose. Mike? Okay, Mike. Yeah, we're uh, traveling. We're uh, going to go into Watonga, and I want to try to get into Watonga and get north of Watonga so I can be ahead of this thing. And, and uh, but right now, I, because of the sense of rotation has, has come down just a little bit, I want to take that opportunity to get north and get ahead of it a little bit more. But I'm looking out the window, looking at my north and my northwest as I travel and not seeing anything out there that's, that's really very alarming. 
Uh, we're, you know, Lightning's helping us out some, but it's not a, you know, it's not a tremendous amount like it. This thing was really electric when we were back at Clinton, but uh, uh, we're getting enough lightning that, that that I can see that there's really nothing back in there that really is uh, alarming to me. But we're going to get on up to what's on. This thing ramped up. Really, it was. It kind of looked this way at Clinton, Mike, and then when it got north of Clinton, it just ramped up extremely fast. And so I want to be in position. So if that happens again, we're there. Back to you. Okay, we do appreciate that. Let's go to Eric Dixon here with an update, also in Blaine County. Eric. Uh, yeah, Mike, I'm over here just northeast of Fay at the intersection of 33 270. Uh, down about Watonga, just west of Tonga, and I'm looking due north at it. I don't see any lowerings yet. And, you know, like Mike was saying, uh, you know, the the lightning has come down a little bit. I noticed just a small little uptick just a moment ago to the north, but um, you know, it seems like this storm's kind of have a little bit of weakening trend. But but like um, Mike was saying, that's kind of what happened back there in Clinton. You know, it came through Clinton and it ramped back up uh, as it started heading towards uh, Custer City and Thomas. And uh, one thing to know, when I was coming through Thomas, I did notice some uh, emergency vehicles starting to head uh, southwest of Thomas. Uh, and then I see another one, uh, maybe some mutual aid heading that way. So uh, don't know what was ha happening back in there, but uh, certainly uh, there, there was getting some attention with the fire departments back there. Back to you. Okay, Eric, we do appreciate that. So if you're just now joining us this evening, we have uh, been on the air now for about three and a half hours straight. Uh, we've had quite a few tornadoes, uh, especially down in southwest Oklahoma earlier. A tornado narrowly missed Frederick on the west side by about two and a half miles, crossed Highway 5, and then another tornado, a larger one, crossed Highway 62 at the 54 junction, and uh, that moved due northward from there. That tornado appeared to be fairly large and multi-vortex along with the other one, but it could have been close to a violent tornado. It was really something else for this time of year. It was more like a May tornado after dark as well. We still have tornado warnings with that one. Still have tornado warnings up here in Blaine County. And the main squall line now is just east of Guyman with tornado watches and even a tornado warning just east of Guyman and west of Beaver. That'll be pushing into far northwest Oklahoma in about two to three hours time, two hours time from right now. So passing through Beaver County and then over into Harper County and Ellis County as we head toward the 11 o'clock hour moving out of the high plains. Tornado watches now are in effect until 11 for Garfield and for Kingfisher and for Canadian and Grady counties right here on the western sides of the metro. That'd be Chickasha and El Reno and Yukon and Kingfisher and Piedmont and Okarchi and Dover and Hennessy and up toward Wacomas and Enid. But uh, tornado warning here until 930 for Blaine County. That one doesn't appear to be tornadic right now. The one down to the southwest still has a fair amount stronger tornado potential. As the main upper level disturbance comes on out, we'll see these squall line storms with uh, wind damage potential and and also some hail potential and vivid lightning potential and pretty heavy rains as well come on out into western Oklahoma during the overnight hours and that will come through the metro between 5 a.m. and about 7 to 7 30 a.m. for tomorrow morning's morning drive so that's still quite a ways out to the west so let's go over to Mark Dillard back with us now east of Cooperton west of Apache Mark uh, yes Mike uh, just uh kind of in a bad radar situation uh, from uh, the, the mountains kind of cutting the beam uh, from the Frederick radar down here. So uh, I still see the, the uh, circulation on um, radar. It's just going to be literally right in front of us here. We're at the, uh, we're at the 5819 uh, curve here just to the west of Apache on the north side of the mountains. And uh, <clears throat> we've got a lot of cloud to ground lightning down here. Striking literally, uh, literally uh, yards from the vehicle, Mike. It's it's a barrage of lightning right now, uh, and then I've got rain on top of that. I just cannot make out any cloud to ground uh, features uh, of anything uh, in contact with the ground, and my winds have really dropped off uh, where I don't have any inflow uh, directly uh, going into something. So. Um, just kind of waiting it out right here for just a second uh, as uh, I'm going to wait for the circulation.
to pass me, and then I can get on down the road here. But it's literally right on top of us, Mike. Okay, so again, and your location right now is? At the uh, 1958 curve uh, or intersection just south. I'm at the curve uh, here. And then uh, now my rain has basically dropped off, had a little hail. I'm looking uh, just off to the uh, uh, south-southeast uh, where you'd be able to see the mountains, uh, uh, but I cannot make them out. Now the rain's starting to pick up. I think it may have just passed and is off uh, to my due east now. I believe, uh, trying to get some lightning in here uh, to uh, illuminate it, but I, I just can't make out cloud features uh, very well, Mike. It's just it's just not conducive to it with all this rain, and then the lightning's literally right on top of us. Okay, Mark Dillard reporting live down there between uh, Cooperton and uh, Apache, not too far from uh, Boone, Oklahoma, down in the southwestern parts of our state. So. If you're just now joining us, we have two supercells here, and we'll kind of give you an overview. And uh, they've both produced tornadoes. There's been quite a few tornadoes this evening. Uh, this one is down coming into Caddo County, west of Apache. So to give your bearings here, this is Grady County and Canadian County and Oklahoma County. And moving northeasterly at 35 miles per hour. It is a little cooler up here, which will be good, hopefully. A lot of wind shear. There's a lot of wind shear up here, which keeps them spinning. But the cooler temperatures should weaken the updraft some, which will be a good thing for us. Here's the time of arrival. Tornado warning continues with it. But uh, the time of arrival as we talk about Chickasha at 1018. And uh, then, well, I don't think we can, there we go. El Reno at 1049. Yukon at 1058. And downtown Oklahoma City at 1113. So that'd be the expected time of arrival of that supercell down here in southwestern Oklahoma. What do you got, John? Blaine County. Blaine County tornado warning is going to be allowed to expire. So the Blaine County tornado warning is going to be allowed to expire. This is the southern supercell here. It's quite a bit more intense moving to the northeast. There's Oklahoma City downtown right there. And Mark Dillard just updated us there. He didn't have a visual on it, but he's uh, not too far away from the circulation center. And to the west of Boone and Apache right now is where it's located. The hook's still very well defined. Moving northeasterly, now pretty much almost clearing out of Comanche County, north of Latonka and north of Medicine Park and Mears. So it's about ready to cross Highway 19. Let's go back over to Mark Dillard. Uh, Mark, it's about uh, three miles south of 19 right now, just crossing into southwestern Caddo County. Yes, Mike, uh, just don't have a visual on it right this second. In fact, I'm going to have to pitch it back to you. I'm, I'm going to have to negotiate some, uh, some roads here. Just give me one second. Yeah, so Mark is over here negotiating these roads uh, down here. And this is, really, this is really tough traveling down here in this part of the state with the mountains and the way the roads do a lot of 90-degree turns uh, to try to get around the mountainous regions down in southwestern Oklahoma. So that's what Mark was just alluding to there. The tornado warning continues, and here's the time of arrival there on the center of that circulation. So Boone and uh, then a Washita and then Anadarko by around... Uh, Oh, the 9.57 hour, pretty close to 10 o'clock for Anadarko. And then from there, potentially up toward uh, the metro there by 10.45 to 11 p.m. this evening. So no confirmation of any tornadoes with it lately. Here's the circulation with it, the Doppler velocities. You look for the hot red and the hot green. And uh, not all that tight and not all that bright. So it doesn't appear to be a tornado vortex signature there. That just appears to be a strong mesocyclone. It came out of Comanche County. It was stronger earlier, but it looks like it's weakened some. So it's just a moderately strong mesocyclone right now. It doesn't appear to be tornadic looking at it. It has lifted a little bit more up to the uh, north, northeast. And the hail size there is still running nickels and dimes with it. So the hail's not all that big as well. There's so much wind shear out there. These are going to be spinning for quite some time. Mark Diller joins us live. Mark? Uh, yes, Mike. Uh, back with you now. Uh, coming around the curve on, uh, on 19. I uh, just wanted to dip off for a second and kind of get a better look. Uh, the lightning is now kind of pulling away from this area. I'm looking for uh, any kind of uh, power line damage, and I believe I've got what's the remnants of the wall cloud uh, just off to my uh, to my east, north, and east uh, right now. And I just made the curve on 19, heading due 
uh, east toward Apache, uh, and uh, now I can make out a little bit better um, cloud base. Yeah, I just don't see anything that's uh, overly alarming right now, Mike, uh, with that circulation that just passed over us. Um, still trying to get a good look off. I might have uh, what I'm going to call uh, basically a ragged uh, wall cloud just off to my north here, uh, about a mile from the uh, 19 curve, uh, just south of 58 intersection. Uh, so I'm about uh, probably 16 uh, west of Apache. Uh, so we'll continue to track this down here. Uh, it hasn't been very easy, but, uh, you know, it did produce that multi Okay, Mark, we do appreciate that. So just to update you here, uh, the tornado warning has been uh, allowed to expire here for Blaine County. And uh, southwest Oklahoma here, this one's considerably stronger. Still a tornado warning here. We're going to stay with that for sure. So we're going to go ahead and take a look here at uh, the one up here in Blaine County. I'll kind of back up the maps here, and we're going to head on up here. There it is. Uh, now coming through the Roman Nose area. So the tornado warning here has now expired and is no longer in effect. They're going to let that expire, expire on out. The mesocyclone there, very little red and green there coming together. Velocities are weaker, considerably weaker. That is no longer a threat of a tornado as long as it doesn't ramp back up. And the hail sizes have come down as well. If we're lucky, we can start to begin to think about uh, kind of writing this one off as far as any big time hail or any type of tornadic activity. Uh, the hail is really quite small, dime size now, and we're losing the hook altogether. This storm, in terms of something really bad, going into some cool air up here around Enid, uh, looks like this storm is really. Uh, has come down considerably and is by far the weakest it has been all evening. Up here in northern Blaine County, it's going to come across southeastern Major County and into Garfield County. There's Enid right there. Let's go back over to Mike Bennett. Mike Bennett, of course, lives in Enid, so it's heading up his direction with a live update here. Mike? Okay, Mike. Yeah, we're uh, up, we're close to Roman Nose and, and uh, I mean, it's it's just really a really cool uh, east wind feeding into it. I mean, it's a damp uh, wind, but it's you know it's pretty cool. We're at uh, 68 degrees right now, and I, the lightning has rates have come down quite a bit on it, and so hopefully this thing is on the on the downward trend. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and stay with it in case it does ramp back up. Uh, that could happen because of the dynamics, but uh, right now. Uh, it's uh, we just don't have a lot of lightning to help us out, which you know usually when these things begin to ramp back up, the lightning rates uh, increase you know pretty fast with it also, and we're not seeing that right now. So we'll go ahead and stay with it, track it towards Oakton, and maybe later into Garfield County. Back to you. Mike, we do appreciate that. Let's go back over to Max One here. So we'll just give you an overview. The Metro here tornado watches for the western sides of town. Canadian and Kingfisher and Garfield, and also uh, Grady County, and then tornado watches through western Oklahoma till 11. Tornado watches for the eastern Texas and Oklahoma panhandles. Squall line now passing Guyman, heading for Beaver County. That'll move into Harper County and Ellis County toward the 11 o'clock hour, and that squall line will come through the metro between 5 a.m. and 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. It's still way out to the west. It is the main upper level disturbance. So that'll continue to track into western Oklahoma. It'll back build and head on down uh, into the Texas Panhandle, then push in to western Oklahoma. Here's Oklahoma City. We have a storm up to our northwest. Uh, this no longer appears to be a tornado threat. It is actually lifting more to the uh, north northeast now. So that storm is as weak as it has been in hours, which is really good news. It's on the northern side of Roman Nose. Mike Bennett was just talking about it. Hail's not very big. It is dime size and pea size and maybe a few nickels, but uh, no signs of any organized rotation at all. It's tracking on up toward Ames and then up toward Lahoma and Enid is where it is going. Uh, power has been out in uh, Custer City and power has been out in Thomas. But is lifting now to the north, and we call that decoupling. 
Uh, it is actually lifting, uh, the, the updraft is actually being elevated off of the low level inflow, which is a definite weakening trend. And that's what's happening on radar right now. So that's very good news. This is no longer a tornado threat. It is lifting, look how it lifts due north of Roman Nose. So some good rains over there east of Okeen and west of Hennessy and the hail size just goes away. So we can, it, we can right now begin to think about writing this one off as far as anything really bad. So that's great news for Blaine County, great news for Garfield County, great news for Eastern Major County. Simply not a problem there. And uh, this, the motion there takes on up to the east side of Okeen and then up toward Ames and then up to the uh, Vance Air Force Base, Wacomus, Bar, Bison, and Enid. Uh, this storm is considerably stronger, still has somewhat of a tornado threat. Uh, temperatures down here about 5 to 8 degrees warmer. And the last report of a wall cloud looking north out of Mears up into uh, Caddo County. And it is heading for the metro as well. But uh, no signs of any tornadoes here lately with that. There's your time of arrival. Downtown Oklahoma City about 11.13 or so, and Yukon at about 11 p.m. is where that one's tracking. Had a history of producing tornadoes, some quite strong, back down to the southwest as it moves northeast into Caddo County. Let's go back over to Mark Dillard here. He's been tracking that uh, for several, quite a few hours now with a live update. Mark? Uh, yes, Mike. Uh, just off to the north, 19 here. May have something coming back down to the ground. Uh, trying to rely on the uh, on the lightning here, just over the top of the hill here at the wind farm. It looks like it's trying to come back down to the ground. My winds just picked up uh, very very rapidly. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I just the lightning's just really not cooperating with me right at this second. But it, it, as we turn back and look just north, uh, north of 19. Uh, it did look like there was something trying to come back down to the ground, Mike. I would not be surprised if it tried again uh, right here, uh, just over the top of the wind farms here, uh, just west of Apache. So uh, we're going to need to get on down to Apache and get the 62 and hook up, and then uh, head toward Apache Y and up toward uh, Fort Cobb there. Okay, Mark, thank you very much. Um, that's an update there for southwestern Oklahoma. Um, it looks like at this juncture we're really in pretty good shape. Uh, Mark did talk about the wall cloud there getting a fair amount lower. Notice the warnings have all gone away here for Blaine County. So we can, we can write this one off here as it moves into cooler air and just some lightning thunder and some heavy rain coming up toward the Enid area. No severe thunderstorm warning and no tornado warning. Tornado warning east of Guymon heading into Beaver County right now. Tornado warnings there. And one tornado warning left in our viewing area in Caddo County right now. Uh, that's going to be just to the west of Apache and Boone, moving to the north northeast and traveling pretty much toward Canadian County and the western sides of the metro as we head toward 1045 and 11. Let's show you some video from earlier this evening. Uh, this was from Mark Dillard as the tornado crossed Highway 62 between Cash and Snyder, Oklahoma. And uh, we're looking there at Mark Dillard's video. That is the tornado. Had a digging debris cloud there for a while. So it was a, it was a strong tornado. It was a pretty good sized cone shaped tornado and then went over to a multi vortex tornado. Uh, down by a little town of Odetta, down there at 54 and 62 from Mark Dillard. That was uh, now about an hour and 20 minutes ago. So that was closer to the 8:15 hour earlier down to the southwest. Let's go back over to radar here. So the tornado watches yes till 11. So we have one supercell. Uh, we can basically write this one off up here in Blaine County. Uh, the one back down to our southwest. Let's go back over to Mark Dillard here with an update on that as it tracks to the northeast eventually toward Northern Grady and Canadian. Mark? Okay, so, uh, so we're in pretty good shape there in that regard, I think. Um, so looking at that storm up there in Blaine County, we're in good shape there. It definitely has weakened considerably and is no longer even severe. So we can, we can write this one off altogether. You know, folks, there's really just this one area here is, is the trouble spot. Otherwise, we're in good shape. It'll keep chugging on off to the northeast, and it'll keep spinning for a while. But uh, tornado warning does continue on it. But uh, it'll probably just slowly, gradually spin down as we head toward Oklahoma County. Again, here's some of that video from Mark Dillard. Uh, that's a pretty nice shot there of the uh, 
cone tornado with the uh, debris cloud right there. Uh, that was a that was a pretty pretty violent tornado for this time of year, and we had that uh, looking at that live uh, back down over 62 and 54 down there in southwestern Oklahoma. Uh, you see the motion there and the changing of the shape very very quickly. Uh, that was a significant, significant tornado there from Mark Dillard. Pretty, pretty big, pretty big there. And there's a shot of it as well. See the digging debris cloud right there. This is Highway 62 and big, that's a big tornado for this time of year with that debris cloud, that kind of V-shaped debris cloud there showing the intensity of the winds from earlier today. So let's go back over to max one here and uh, temperatures, it's 70 outside. So we have cooled off quite a bit in Oklahoma City. It is a little warmer down in the southwest, 75 degrees in Lawton. Tornado watches here still do continue ahead of that one supercell and also ahead of that line in Beaver County that will push into western and northwestern Oklahoma. Uh, but basically, it's really all about this one lingering supercell uh, down here in Caddo County right now. And it's moving to the northeast, and there's the history of it, producing the tornadoes back to the southwest, and then also the tornadoes not too far from the Clinton area. Steve, what do you have? Go to Mark, if he's on the line. Mark Dillard, let's go to you for a live update here. Mark, uh, we've been checking here with you, and you're over there by Boone and Apache. What does he have? He says he's got a bowl off to his northwest. Okay, so he's got a, a, a wall cloud off to his northwest right now is what Mark is talking about. He mentioned that earlier, how it was getting a little bit lower. This is going to be the one down in Caddo County. Uh, it's still rotating, still has a mesocyclone. Go, Mark Dillard. Funnel uh, cloud. Yes, Mike, I'm looking to, yes, uh, it may even, it's, I believe it's in contact with the ground, Mike. I believe it got a tornado on the ground. Uh, it's going to be to my uh, north and west. And uh, let me get my location here. Uh, I'm, I'm on Highway 19, looking off to my north and west. I'm exactly uh, about four uh, to five to the uh, west of Apache, looking off to my northwest. And I'm going to put the funnel, uh, possible tornado, uh, probably about uh, two to three to my northwest. Uh, that's going to be uh, heading it toward uh, Fort Cobb. So, uh, folks in Fort Cobb, uh, you don't have a whole lot of time, and these uh, have been very difficult to see. In fact, Mike, it may have lifted already. Uh, now, uh, st still down, still down over halfway down, uh, just very difficult to see in the lightning flashes we have to depend on here uh, to see it. But it's off to my northwest. I'm going to put it about 10 to the southwest of Fort Cobb and to uh, about uh, – uh, 10 to the northwest of Apache, so it's kind of out there uh, in that uh, area between Carnegie, Fort Cobb, and Apache, uh, to almost to the uh, immediate uh, south-southwest of Fort Cobb, approaching uh, to, uh, it's moving to the north uh, and uh, northeast, so Fort Cobb, uh, folks, you're going to want to start getting ready for it because it's coming. I uh, believe it may have kind of uh, uh, lifted. I don't see as much of a pronounced uh, lowering as I did, but Mike, I have to tell you, uh, oh no, it is on the ground. It's still on the ground. Tornado on the ground uh, to my north and, and west from about four west of Apache, looking off, uh, and it's going to be about five for me now. It's moving toward Fort Cobb. Fort Cobb, immediate tornado precautions. Mike, we're going to have to get on down to 62. Okay, so this is down in Caddo County, a new tornado on the ground. This is going to be uh, southeast of Carnegie and heading for the Fort Cobb area down in Caddo County. Uh, that is a new tornado on the ground. Uh, we'll zoom on into that and take a look. Uh, so, yes, so Fort Cobb, uh, near Fort Cobb, southeast of Fort Cobb, uh, west of Anadarko as it moves to the northeast. So that is a new tornado warning in effect for Caddo County and a confirmed tornado here on the ground from Mark Dillard. Here's Fort Cobb and here's Anadarko and the motion here is going to be basically due northeastward. So hail size is not all that big, diamond nickel size coming into the Fort Cobb area, but uh, that circulation with that tornado uh, to the southwest of Anadarko. So east of Fort Cobb, south of Fort Cobb, around the lake, over to Anadarko, tornado precautions. That is a new tornado confirmed by Mark Dillard. He's been tracking that supercell for several hours. It's produced a lot of tornadoes northwest of Apache 
and just to the southeast of Fort Cobb. And the tornado located north of 19 by about five miles. Time of arrival there for uh, you folks in Anadarko at about 10 o'clock, so in about 20 minutes from right now. There's the tornado clearly visible. Nice job, Mark Dillard. Uh, that is the tornado vortex signature right there. Mark, are you still with us? We see the TVS, and it is going to be just due south of Fort Cobb. Are you still there? Yeah, uh, yes. It's a pattern uh, there uh, up to the Fort so Mark's in some pretty difficult cell coverage there, but it is going to be traveling uh, very much in the direction of Fort Cobb, uh, just to maybe just to the southeast of Fort Cobb, but it's going to be very, very close uh, to Fort Cobb. So tornado precautions from Fort Cobb to west of Anadarko's and around the lake there as well. You definitely want to uh, take your tornado precautions. That is a confirmed tornado there from Mark Dillard. And... Uh, Mark, if you're still with us, is it still on the ground? We still saw that TVS. So Mark is located uh, south, southwest of Fort Cobb, uh, to the northwest of Apache, and he's looking up to the uh, north from his location and could clearly see it, and sure enough, it showed up on radar. So uh, that's going to be uh, Caddo County, brand new tornado warning, confirmed tornado. Doesn't appear to be a big one looking at radar, but... Uh, it is a tornado on the ground. Uh, let's go back over, take radar here full, and uh, there's Fort Cobb. Here's Anadarko, talking about central Caddo County here, all around the lake at Fort Cobb, lifting up to the northeast at 33 miles per hour now. And we'll zoom on in, take a little closer look. Fort Cobb, the lake, there's Apache, Boone. So it's going to be north of Boone there a little ways, north of Highway 19 to the south of Fort Cobb, and the tornado's kind of moving more to the north-northeast, so Fort Cobb, you are basically on the edge of the tornado warning, but you're in it, and we're talking about 9.55 in less than 15 minutes from right now uh, with that tornado. It doesn't appear to be a big tornado, but we can show you the uh, tornado vortex signature here, and it actually went up and then went away. Just in the past, just in this last scan, it was there, and then it then it quickly dissipated. So Mark had the tornado. It may not even be on the ground now. It may happen simply that fast. It was there, and then it's not. That is not a tornado vortex signature there, but a strong mesocyclone. But sure had the TVS uh, just a couple of minutes ago when Mark had it coming down and confirmed it on the ground. Mark, are you still with us there south of uh, Fort uh, Cobb? So this is Mark's live stream from Caddo County. Looks like it's not on the ground anymore. It was on the ground for maybe a minute or two there, and Mark had it coming down and confirmed it on the ground. Looked like it might have gone down and lifted and gone back down again. Velocities look like it's probably back up now. Mark, are you with us? Uh, tornado warning does continue for Caddo County. Mark? Yeah, cell coverage down here is just not very good down in southwestern Oklahoma. Back over to radar. So uh, you see the uh, tornado vortex shows up and then it goes away. So still uh, tornado precautions up there around the lake at Fort Cobb. It came out of Comanche County a short while ago. Hail size is not very big. Uh, dime size at best on that. So basically it's all about the spin and not so much the big hail, but a confirmed tornado. And it is moving to the northeast and here's your time of arrival. These will probably just keep spinning as they come into the west side of the metro. There's a lot of wind shear up there up here, but it is cooler in the metro area. But there's your time of arrival. Talking about the west metro, the way it looks right now, Union City, Mustang, Minko, Tuttle, Pocasset, Amber, Verdon area, and then perhaps over toward the Yukon area, Canadian County a bit later on. We're talking about the 11 o'clock, 11, 15 hour by that time for the metro. Mark Diller joins us live. Mark? Uh, yes, Mike. Uh, we're pulling into Apache uh, and going to head north. Uh, now, Apache's out of the woods as far as, as this goes, folks, but it's the areas to the north and west of Apache up towards Fort Cobb. Uh, in southeast of Carnegie, uh, real concern now. I, I'm looking back, and I don't have a uh, funnel in contact with the ground that I can make out, Mike. I've got a few uh, in the form right now, so it's kind of a, not uh, conducive to me actually seeing all the way underneath the base. 
but uh, you know, literally less than five minutes ago, we did have that funnel all the way down to the ground. Uh, very, very narrow funnel, very laminar funnel. Uh, so it's not quite as as wide and violent looking as it was when it was down there by Snyder at Highway 62. But uh, we're going to continue to uh, work our way to the north now. And uh, uh, folks in Fort Cobb, you're going to need to take your tornado precautions. And then we're going to be heading over toward Anadarko. So. Uh, just uh, keep that in mind, folks, that, uh, again, nighttime tornadoes, don't risk it. If you're not in a safe spot, uh, get to one as soon as you can, as long as it's safe to do so or the sturdiest part of your home. Back to you. So, Mark, it uh, basically was a pretty brief touchdown, and, and it looked small on radar, and your visual confirmed it was not a very large tornado. Uh, no, uh, not, not from my vantage point. Now, I was also about uh, three... Uh, maybe four to the south and east there. Uh, we were just looking along the horizon, and, uh, you know, at night uh, storm tracking, you have to really uh, rely on the lightning illumination, and uh, we got a couple of strikes to silhouette it, and that's when you could see it. Uh, it's, it's just very, very difficult to track these things at night, uh, much less during the day, but I do want to continue to tell folks in the Fort Cobb area uh, take your tornado precautions, better safe than sorry, and we're going to continue north from Apache, Mike. Okay, that is uh, Mark Dillard there reporting live. Uh, new tornado warning is in effect for Caddo County until 1015, until 1015 uh, for the next 30 minutes or so for uh, Caddo County, uh, Fort Cobb area in particular as uh, it moves on to the northeast. Let's go back out to Max 1. Give you an overview again as to what we're looking at. New tornado warning. There's one storm in our viewing area. It has a tornado warning and just had a confirmed tornado with it south of uh, the uh, Fort Cobb, a little way south of the lake there. Out to the west here, squall lines forming out in the eastern Oklahoma and Texas panhandles in western Kansas. Those storms are severe. The tornado warning to the uh, east of Guymon has expired for the time being, but the tornado watch continues until 11 p.m. There's the tornado warning for Caddo County. So here's radar. Eventually, this will be approaching Canadian County in the west side of the Oklahoma City metro. Eventually, here's we head toward the 11 o'clock hour. And here's the squall line coming out of the uh, panhandle. Zooming on in, good news here about the northern Blaine County storm continues to weaken. No longer has a tornado warning. No longer has a severe thunderstorm warning. It is non-severe. It has brief areas of heavy rain and some pea-sized hail. That's it. There's no risk of any tornado with that. No signs of any rotation. It's near O'Keen to the east of Canton, heading up toward Ames and Ringwood and La Homa eventually, but is no longer a threat. It is much, much weaker than it was even 30 minutes ago. Hail size has basically gone away altogether. Rotation has also gone away altogether. Looking at it from multiple angles there, there's no remaining rotation. It'll head on up toward uh, the West Enid area, La Homa, as we head toward 1027 or so, uh, eastern Major and western Garfield County. The troublemaker here, a tornado briefly just about 10 minutes ago from Mark Dillard. Brand new tornado warning till 1015 for Caddo County. This is about 60 miles to the southwest of downtown Oklahoma City, and it's moving to the northeast at 33 miles per hour. And uh, we'll go ahead and put the storm projection on there for you. Again, the West Metro, the way it looks, that's the red line, center line, up toward Yukon and El Reno. So Minko 1041, El Reno 1057. Yukon, give or take about 1107 or so. Has a tornado warning right now. It is a little cooler up over the metro than it is down here, but there's tons of wind shear out there. So these are going to keep spinning. If we're fortunate, this will slowly weaken as it heads toward the metro. That should be the trend, although we just don't know for sure. But uh, that should be the trend. We'll see it gradually weaken as it heads up toward the western sides of the metro. See the hook kind of reforming there a little bit. Uh, it'll go to the south of the lake and probably go just to the southeast of Fort Cobb and just to the west of Anadarko. So splitting the difference there along Highway 9 between Fort Cobb and Anadarko is where the center of that circulation is going to track. Mark Dillard saw the tornado looking northbound from Highway 19 about eight minutes ago. It has since lifted. So here's another storm projection for you as it heads through central Caddo County with a new tornado warning until 1015. Anadarko, west side of town at about 1006. It's 948 right now. And uh, velocity signature there, it was there and then it went away. 
Doesn't appear to be tornadic right there. That's a pretty loose circulation. Mesocyclone's still there. That's a pretty loose circulation, though, in Caddo County, kind of zooming into it there a little bit. Doesn't appear to be tornadic right now. Let's go back to Mark Dillard if we can get an update from Mark. Mark? Uh, yes, Mike. Now uh, north down on uh, 62 from uh, Apache and looking off to my north, uh, northwest. And uh, I can't make out any uh, real, uh, you know, funnel feature, wall feature uh, at this time. Uh, just waiting on the lightning to kind of work with us a little bit. And uh, let me get on top of this uh, hill just a second. But, uh, yeah, just off to uh, the area of concern from Apache is off to the uh, northwest. And then for sure from Fort Cobb to the south and uh, southwest. So, just need folks in that area between it, basically a draw line between Apache and, and Fort Cobb, and that's where we need you to be uh, aware uh, of for sure south of Fort Cobb right now. So um, we're continuing up 62, Mike, and the lightning, honestly, it's dropped off. The, the uh, cloud of the ground has dropped off a, a little bit. We were having uh, about three or four strikes um, or more a minute there when we were back toward the mountains. Uh, literally very, very close to us um, uh, with uh, George Weaver tonight, uh, my chase partner. So we're going to continue on here on, on 62, heading up to the Y, and then uh, hopefully we'll kind of break out of this and, and kind of have a better shot. I want to also say the rain has dropped off immensely here in the last uh, uh, 20 minutes or so. Uh, we were in an absolute deluge when we were back in the core there, but, uh, you know, pretty much rain free out ahead on the east side now so we're going to continue uh north mike i just cannot make out the base very well from here and i do not see anything in contact with the ground uh that is overly concerning uh from here i kind of got kind of got a shot there with that lightning strike uh on the cloud base couldn't make out a could not make out a uh, a uh, lowering or any kind of a wall feature per se so just a second, we may have had some folks off the road here. Um, yeah, so we're in a construction area, so it's kind of difficult to, uh, okay, this guy's waving me by, so I'm going to come around him. Uh, just a second, Mike, let me negotiate some of this traffic. Um, not as bad chase or convergence, fortunately, as we had uh, Sunday, for sure. There was a lot of people down here, but at night, not so many. Uh, we've got, uh, let's see, a lightning strike there. Uh, don't see much on the base. I'm looking at radar also, uh, and it's not as concerning, those colors coming together as it was, but that's not to say that we need to let our guard down in Fort Cobb uh, just yet because, uh, you know, it rapidly intensifies and goes through cycles. Mike, back to you. Mark, it looks like the lightning rates have come down a fair amount as well, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, we were absolutely uh, in, a, in a lightning barrage back there at the curve of the 19 uh, west of Apache, uh, right there at the base of the mountains. It was, uh, <clears throat> I mean, it was really coming, coming down to the point where I couldn't get out of the vehicle to really get a better look at things. Uh, uh, several close lightning strikes to the vehicle. Uh, but, uh, you know, and not a lot of hail either. I was going to say the largest hail I've had is probably quarters. Uh, so that's also good, but uh, right now, Mike, let me get a good look at the amount of some trees now and get a better look at the base. Uh, don't have anything overly alarming to me right this second, but I still need to kind of get up to, to uh, the Y here where uh, we got a little more of a bluff. Back to you. Okay, Mark, we'll check back with you. Let's uh, take a look here at the video again. It looks like there's been at least four or five tornadoes today. We're going to take you back to uh, a little bit after 8 o'clock here, uh, about 8, 15, 8, 20. Uh, this, was, this was the tornado as it came up from Frederick. Uh, the tornado crossed 5, about 2 and a half to 3 west of Frederick, moved due north, uh, not too far from Manitou, and then redeveloped and re-intensified as it came up to Highway 62 at Highway 54. That's between Snyder and Cash. And this was the uh, video we we're showing you live uh, at a strong October tornado. This was a large kind of cone-shaped tornado, then went to an elephant trunk-looking tornado, 
There's Highway 62. You can see it there in Mark's live stream. Has a digging debris cloud, which is something that you don't see every day in October, but a digging debris cloud. Really a dramatic shot there. Quite a tornado for October. And it, it re and look at the look at the large cone there again with a digging. Do you see that there? A digging debris cloud. Digging debris cloud. He's not very far away from it either. Isn't that something? That's impressive there. This is Highway 62 right here. And it came up right to his west, crossed Highway 62, just southeast of the 62. 54 junction with a digging debris cloud and he was less than a mile away from it quite a bit closer even here and then it reached its peak intensity north of 62 just to the east of 54 uh, northeast of the little town of Odetta it got quite a bit stronger even than right here could have e easily been a an EF3 type tornado potentially even briefly perhaps stronger than that it had some very high velocity winds with it a, a very significant tornado even for the month of May in Oklahoma but quite a view there from Mark Dillard that was uh, just around 815 820 quite a ways back down to the southwest of where Mark and his photojournalist with him is tracking it now uh, they're up there uh, near Fort Cobb and Anadarko in Caddo County this was down here coming out of Tillman County going into Kiowa County and Western Comanche County impressive shot there of a, a nighttime strong October tornado and you saw that if you're watching us there during that 8 to 8 30 hour so the storm continues to chug along it just produced a brief tornado about 14 15 minutes ago uh, north of Boone uh, and south of Fort Cobb. Here's the storm track on it. Uh, it does, still does have a tornado warning until 1015, another 20 minutes or so. Uh, it looks like it may continue to slowly spin down. That's what we're hoping. That's what it's doing right now. But we're talking about Binger and Minko and El Reno and Yukon and maybe near downtown, perhaps Yukon, really the west side of the metro there as we head toward the 11 o'clock hour. Still a supercell. You can still see the somewhat classic look to it. The hook is not as strong as it was earlier, but it's moving off to the northeast around 35 miles per hour. Central Caddo County now probably goes through northwestern Grady County up toward Union City and then up toward uh, potentially about Mustang and Yukon and El Reno. So uh, just to the southeast of Fort Cobb, between Fort Cobb and Anadarko, is where that mesocyclone is going to travel. And it came out of the uh, Boone area uh, west of Apache about 15, 20 minutes ago. There may have been a tornado down in the Wichita Wildlife Refuge as well. So here's another timeline there showing it in Caddo County as it moves up there. Uh, into central Caddo County to the west of Anadarko. Velocities are not impressive right now at all. There's a little bit of green, a little bit of red, but they're very far apart. Looks like the mesocyclone is blown out. If it stays like this, if it were to stay like this, I would uh, doubt the tornado warning would be extended. Uh, it could easily ramp back up, but it is going into cooler air right now up in uh, northern and eastern Caddo County. Temperatures drop off to about 70 degrees. And back down to the southwest when it was producing tornadoes, it was in the mid to high 70s. So that can make a big difference. A lot of wind shear ahead of it still, so it's going to be spinning for quite some time. Hail sizes are not very big, uh, running dime and pea size right now. So not a lot of large hail, mainly just a lot of spin to the storm right now. And again, there's another projection here for you. Tornado watches are in effect here until 11 for Grady and for Canadian and for Kingfisher County, the western sides of the Oklahoma City Metro. So El Reno there at 11.05 and Yukon by 11.15 or so as it moves on off to the northeast between 30 and 35 miles per hour. Still a tornado warning with it. Uh, the enhanced risk does continue. Squall lines is going to be coming out of the panhandle as we head toward the uh, midnight hour tonight. We have storm trackers up in northwest Oklahoma, still a moderate risk as well. And there may still be some tornadoes overnight tonight as that squall line comes out of the panhandle. About a 30 minutes ago, there was a tornado warning uh, in the Guyman area. So here's future weather as we head through the overnight hours. The squall line develops. We see some good rain, a lot of lightning and thunder, risk of some damaging winds, some large hail, still a lingering but generally lower tornado threat rolling through the 4, the 5, the 6 o'clock 
in the morning hour. The line comes through the metro as well. So the first part of the morning drive will likely be wet tonight. And a few of these storms could still be lingering severe as we head toward the 4, 5, 6, and 7 o'clock hour tomorrow morning from west to east across the metro. Going to stop the radar there at 630 in the morning. So as the morning drive starts to kick off, we'll see some showers and thunderstorms move through. Let's go back over to Mark Dillard with an update again on that storm. Just one of them right now in our viewing area down in Caddo County. Mark? Uh, yes, Mike, uh, just pulling up uh, at the Apache Y here. Um, we've got, uh, we've got uh, actually passing for locals, uh, the Fort Sill Apache uh, store uh, here at uh, 62. And um, we're going to turn and look off to the north and west. Let me get out of these lights just a little bit. And, uh, you know, we had, we had just had a very, very broad cloud base, Mike. I didn't see anything like a wall cloud feature that I was uh, overly concerned about. Uh, the lightning, as you mentioned, had dropped off quite a bit, so we don't really have that illumination to make silhouettes with. Uh, but again, I uh, really don't want folks in the path of this storm, and you can watch it uh, when Mike shows the maps and the radar exactly the direction that it's going. We don't want you to, um, you know, be uh, uh, not concerned about it because uh, we've seen it cycle so many times, Mike, from Frederick. Uh, and, and, and remember that it was not even a severe warned at the time. Uh, it, not, it really went tornadic uh, as it was coming around the, the Frederick radar site uh, and, and wrapped around Frederick and, and uh, had a tornado warning on it and then dissipated, hopped over Manitou.